All right. Now we're doing free code camp, JavaScript algorithms, data structures, beta. Build a palindrome checker project user stories number seven. Number seven? Yes, number seven. Uh, so when the text input element contains the text underscore I and the check button element is clicked, the result element should contain the text underscore I is a palindrome. All right. So for this one, we're going to have to clean up the text input dot value. Because right now, if we do underscore I and put it in there, nothing's going to happen because it's not a palindrome, according to this thing, all right? So what we need to do is we're going to have to use the replace method on the text input dot value to replace anything that's not a uh, anything that's not a letter or a number, lowercase or uppercase letter or a number. Uh, replace all that stuff with uh, what is it like blanks? Not blank spaces with uh, empty strings, right? So the thing about that is we're going to have to do it here and. We're going to have to do it here. So since we don't want to repeat ourselves, because why? Why would we want to type twice? Uh, we're going to create a variable up here, right? So we'll say const replace, replaced like that, right? So we'll say equals. So what we're going to do here is we'll get the text input dot value, right? Let's take this, put it right here, and then we're going to replace. We're going to say dot replace, all right? I think we went over replaced before. Uh, in an, uh, in one of the courses before. But anyway, if you need a refresher, we've got it right here. Basically, all it does is we're going to put a string dot replace and then we'll replace what we what we find right here with uh, what we uh, wanted to replace it with. But what we're going to use is some regex like this, like looking for dog and replace it for with ferret. So here's dog case insensitive, right? So here's dog and then ferret right here. All right. So for that, what we're going to do is we'll start off with the regex, right? But the thing is, it's not going to be as simple as this. We're going to have to use a character class because we're looking for any letters or numbers, right? So character classes, let's come over here. Uh, character classes uh, are these brackets. Whenever we use regex and put brackets, put something in brackets, it's going to be a character class, which matches any one of the enclosed characters. But we don't want to match... We don't want to just type in all of the punctuation and stuff. What we want to do is match anything that's not a, a, a letter or a number, right? So what we're going to do for that is use the negated character, pardon me, the negated or complemented character class. That is, it matches anything that is not enclosed in the square brackets. So when we put a caret in front of whatever we're trying to not match, we will not match it, all right? So for that, we're going to have the brackets first. All right, so we put the brackets here and then inside here, we're gonna do the caret, which is shift six like that, All right? So now inside of this, we want to match A through Z, capital A through Z, all right? And we can't put a space in there because if we put a space, it'll match, it'll uh, say don't match spaces either. And we wanna match the spaces, all right? So we're gonna have capital A through Z, then we're gonna have lowercase a through Z like this, all right? And it knows when it sees a capital A through a capital Z that this hyphen is part of this thing right here of, of the um, range, all right? Uh, but if we if we just put another hyphen at the end, it would also not match hyphens, just to let you know, all right? And then we're also going to do zero through nine like this, all right? So now it's going to not match all of this stuff right here. So we want to go, we also know that regex, if we do regex, it'll only match it one time unless we put the global search flag. So we're going to put that G, this, where is it, where is it? The global search flag, the G, right after this uh, slash right here. So we'll put the G like that. So now it's going to match it more than one time. So any one, anything that's not an A through Z, capital A through Z, lowercase a through Z, or zero through nine, all right? So now let's go back to replace. We're going to have to have a comma and replace it with something, right? So we'll say comma after this G, comma, and we're going to replace it with an empty string like that, just so it, pardon me, deletes the character, right? 
So let's come down here and I'll show you what, what's going on. So let's do a console.log and let's say a string blah, with some numbers and some spaces and some punctuation and some more letters and some more punctuation, right? Now let's do dot replace, dot replace. And let's just take this thing right here. Uh, let's take all this and then let's just drop it off right here. And let's open up the console. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> What's the problem? Uh, No, dot replace, dot replace. All right, and so you see right here, it took all of the uh, punctuation and spaces and all that stuff out of there and just left us with numbers and letters, right? We can even put some capital letters, why not? And look at that. All right, so there's that proven that it works. Uh, so now we've got this thing going on, this replace thing. So now let's, let's change these two up, all right? So let's change this with replaced. Let's take replace, change this one with replaced and let's change this one with replaced either. But remember to leave this one here because let's say it's like uh, a bunch of a bunch of uh, punctuation and stuff with the letter A. Uh, we don't want to switch it. We don't want to change the length of the thing. OK, we don't want to do anything like that. Or do we? Uh, no, we don't. We don't. We don't. Because I mean, if it's longer than if it's longer than one, it'll do this on it regardless. All right. So now let's come up here and let's put underscore I to see if we made it work. Check it. I is up. There we go. So this is a palindrome. Looks like it's good. Let's uh, run the test. So when the text input element contains the text, not a palindrome and the check button element is clicked, the result element should contain the text. Not a palindrome is not a palindrome. All right. So it looks like we're on to user stories eight and we'll see you next time.